In electronics, negative resistance is a property of some electrical circuits and devices in which an increase in voltage across the device's terminals results in a decrease in the electric current through it. This is in contrast to any ordinary resistor in which an increase of applied voltage causes a proportional increase of in current due to Ohm's law. A device can have a negative resistance over only a limited portion of its voltage or current range. Therefore, there is no real negative resistor analogous to a positive resistor which has a constant negative resistance over an arbitrarily wide range of current. Okay, we're here to dispute that. And we have this machine here, we call it the 666 machine. We have two secondaries. Uh, first one's about two inches above its pole. And we have intervening secondaries that we use as a feedback loop to display the negative resistance effect. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just turn the uh, machine on and uh, note the voltage and amperages and note the voltage across those secondaries set up in series. Right now we have a neon, I, we also have a small neon bulb load across that and we also have a voltage meter across that. So we'll go up there and turn everything on and when we do this we'll be able to display what the negative resistor effect will have on the output voltage. I call that the tenth embodiment. But we don't worry about that because the eleventh one's the better one. I'll go ahead and turn that on. feedback loop is in place and that gives us 1.4 volts on turn on with no field that will disengage the feedback loop and that's, this gives us the ordinary readings that we want to pursue on a positive resistance over here we have 1.5 ohms. I should have explained this before. It's been explained many times. Each of them white wafers there groups represents a quarter ohm and they're in series. Three, so we have three quarter ohm load per phase right now. What we need to do is we need to disconnect that portion of the uh, circuit and we can do that by disconnecting the amperage meters across each LC junction, which we'll proceed to do to the cell now. And we're at 0.9 volts. see we got 1.2 volts with no load. Recall that we had greater than that when we had the self-feedback circuit engaged. We got zero amperages all down the line. Self-feedback loop is disconnected. Now we're going to turn on our uh, field.
Okay, that shows us what our open line voltage is. Now we're going to connect the xenon bulb circuit. Hook to them secondaries. And note the action of the circuit as a positive resistor. Let's see there, what do we do there? We didn't show that either. I probably blew my voltage meter up. Okay, we got everything disconnected. Uh, we're safe on that. Uh, okay, we want to connect everything up then. And note our drops in voltage when operating as a positive resistor. We got 7.7 .7 volts. Now we're going to energize the circuit. We're going to let the neon be low. So that's the effect of the positive resistance circuit, and that positive resistance circuit can indeed light that neon, wherever it's at. Where the hell is it at? I can't see it. There it is. Can't see it in daylight very well. And it lights that neon uh, with secondaries over two inches. Above their poles. That was an inch and a half above its poles. Uh, we're going to hook the voltage meter up right quick away. Oh, it's already hooked up? No, it's not. Well, one, one end is hooked up. We'll hook the other end up. What was going on with that? I don't understand that. Well, it's showing 118 volts. Lighten that neon. We're wasting time here. Can't already see it. Disconnect the voltage meter again. Okay, disconnect the voltage meter entirely. I don't understand why that was showing voltage on one end. Okay, now we're going to disengage the neon. The system will barely light the xenon. Now we're going to engage the negative resistance circuit. And crucially, we're going to see then that once we attach the circuit, the voltage of the source, instead of going down, powering the resistance, will go above its open load state. So well, here we go. We're at 6.8, 6.5, and 6.7 volts, engaging the feedback loop. We're at 13, 15, and 14 volts. And if you add them voltages up, there's our amperages also. 2.4, 3.5, 1.9. And there's the effect of the bulb being lit on the negative resistance circuit. And what I formally calculated to be more than 170% efficient. 
And then we're going to close the garage door here and show how that also lighting a small neon. That neon's being lit from the xenon bulb circuit route, being routed through those prime areas of this bipolar Tesla coil system, and the xenon bulb produces the on-off effect that a Tesla R-cap does, thus enabling the top discharge. Thank you.